good morning to all so in the last lecture we were discussing about agents and environments what is the difference between agent program and agent function then what is table driven agent why table driven agent is not used in real life scenarios as it requires so many entries or a uh, few tasks which human beings can perform easily so that is the reason we avoid table based agent approach then simple reflex agents are there uh, this is simplest kind of agent and it it uh, responds to the present input only ignoring the rest of the perceived history for example the agent performs the sign of something sign of sign of the input say input is 0 it will find sign of 0 if it is 45 it will find sign of 45 like that simple function is the agent function and uh, it responds to that ignoring the history so uh, this is one kind of agent simple reflex agent so uh, typically there are condition action rules like if car in front is braking then initiate braking okay so these rules are there just told and it will refer to those rules but it will uh, respond to the present that's all like this so what the world is like now then uh, there are rules and what action should i do now and the actuators will reflect that action the functional representation of simple reflex agent then model based reflex agent the most effective way to handle partial observability is for the agent to keep track of part of the world it cannot see now that is the agent should maintain some sort of internal state like uh, some part it observed earlier so it will save that state and uh, it becomes the perceived history and it becomes the model of previous state and then using that model as well as uh, present state it will take the decision that what is to be done right now okay so uh, that is uh, uh, the agent should maintain some sort of internal state that depends on perceived history and thereby reflects at least some of the so here is the block diagram of model based reflex agent here the input will come uh, it will come through the sensors and uh, uh, the question is what the world is like now so uh, it is current input then uh, earlier state earlier how the world evolves this information is stored what my actions do so this history is stored that for then in addition to this condition action rules are there so using all these things model based reflex agent will work okay this action will be taken so there are some uh, scenarios where uh, some part of environment is not visible or not uh, available uh, to the sensors okay. and that's why we have to depend on uh, previous inputs one example is uh, background subtraction so for background subtraction uh, what we have to do we have to check current frame and previous frame and we find the difference between the two and then we can know uh, that whether there is movement or not now sometimes what happens that there is small change in the camera view it may be due to noise or due to some small object that is moving and it's because of that small movement uh, the machine says that oh there is a change because uh, pixel wise there is a change between these two frames but that is very negligible so uh, that's why uh, we have to use model based agent which will uh, keep history of say previous 5000 frames whether there is some change in 5000 frames or not and then only it will reflect that uh, into the action okay 
So uh, we have to build the model. We are going to build that model. MOG is the name, mixture of Gaussian model for background suppression. This is the model we are going to discuss later on in last module. So this model based reflex agent, it has perceived as input. It returns the action to the actuator. What is persistent means uh, what is uh, keep on changing that is state. Model rules and action this keep on changing. So how they change state is equal to update state. So for uh, for this update state function, you have state action percept and model. These are the inputs. It will give the new state and rule. Uh, so uh, state and rules. Uh, these are matched and exact rule is found out and for that rule. What was the action that was taken that is computed uh, that is retrieved and that action is returned. Then next is goal based agents. The first was simplex agent. Next is model based agent. Third is goal based agent. Knowing something about the current state of the environment is not always enough to decide what to do. For example, at a road junction, the taxi can turn left, turn right, or go straight. The correct decision depends on where the taxi is trying to get to. In other words, as well as a current state description, the agent needs some sort of goal information. Like uh, if we want to go from a destination uh, uh, from location A to location B, where B is a destination, then we may set the Google map. So uh, B becomes our goal, A becomes our starting point, and uh, the shortest path is uh, calculated and reach the goal. So uh, uh, ultimately to attain the goal, these agents, uh, they take the actions accordingly. So such agents are called as goal based agent. Uh, here uh, the agent needs some sort of goal information that is desired that are to be completed. For example, being at the passenger's destination. So say, uh, Passenger books the cab and, and this cab takes the passenger and reach at a certain destination. So that is one of the desirable thing from goal based agent. So here, uh, the, the what the world is like now. So this is current input, then previous state, how the world evolves, what actions are taken, what it will be like if I do action A. Will it fulfill my goal? Will it complete the performance metrics that are required to achieve my goal. So this is uh, uh, taken care of and uh, it is compared with goal and then what action is to be done. So this goal based agent. Next is utility based agents. So goals alone are not enough to generate high quality behavior in most environments. For example, in many action sequences will get the taxi to its destination. Thereby achieving the goal. Now uh, to reach destination B from destination A. Say there are three routes. Route A is the route which is shortest one. So you'll require uh, less amount of uh, diesel and uh, less amount of time to reach from A to B from route one, which is shortest, but there is problem in that route. Problem is the road is not good and the road is not safe. So although we can reach from A to B quickly, that path is not safe or that path is not uh, good for the customer's point from the customer's point of view. So uh, we have to avoid that part. Although it is cheaper, so goal will be achieved. What is goal uh, to reach from A to B? From uh, the owner's perspective, uh, it should be cheapest one. So the profit will be maximum, right? But goals just provide a crude binary distinction between happy and unhappy states. More general performance measure should allow comparison of different world states according to exactly how happy they would make the agent. But happy does not sound very scientific. 
economists and computer scientists use the term utility instead. OK, so in, in the end, uh, uh, whoever the uh, person that is utilizing the agent, uh, it should be satisfied with the, the route, which is not uh, cheapest. Uh, say route two is there, which is somewhat longer, but the road is good, safe, reliable. So uh, uh, in the that road can be preferred. So it will end up in happy uh, client. And plus uh, the owner may not be uh, that much happy, but that may not be sad if you take the route three, which is longest. So in that case, the owner may not be that much. Happy. Okay. So, uh, like this, the utility based agents they find the path or they find the uh, set of operations to reach the goal by taking into consideration all these things. So, here you can see uh, sensors are there, what the world is like now, so current state, and then the previous states, how the world evolves, now what my actions do, what if I take, uh, what it will be like if I do action A. Uh, and then utility. So this utility earlier it was goal. Now this is utility. How happy I will be in such a state? What action uh, I should do now? Like this. Uh, this is the utility based agent. Then there is learning agent. So in learning agent, uh, the environment is uh, perceived via this critic block. The feedback, whether uh, uh, some some input is given that up to the mark or not, it is good or not. If it is good, then learn from it. Okay, learn from it and make the changes. And uh, those changes are reflected. Then uh, here, uh, before reflecting that, uh, actually uh, the problem is generated. Learning goals are there. Okay, so learning goals will give us the. Uh, problem and uh, according to both these things, changes and uh, the goal, uh, the action is reflected. Okay, and uh, this there is a feedback from performance element to learning element, so it is continuously improving. So this is learning based agent like uh, reinforcement learning, which is part of uh, machine learning, where uh, if you do good thing, uh, there is reward. If you bad thing, there is penalty. In this way, the agent has to evolve. So these are learning based agents. So these were the agents. Uh, so till now we have discussed about many types of agents. Able devil agent. Simple reflex agent. Model based agent. Goal based agent. Utility based agent. Learning agent. That's okay. So, uh, regarding this, uh, please go through uh, this book, Artificial Intelligence: A Modern Approach, Third Edition by uh, Peter Norvig and Stuart Russell. Okay, so this book is really good for this part of our syllabus. Uh, I request all of you to please read this book in detail regarding the agents, environment, types of agent. They are given several examples. And try to solve the unsolved problems uh, given in, in this particular book. All right, so uh, this was one part of uh, our syllabus. Uh, next is Python programming. So regarding Python programming, we are already uh, discussing this in lab. Okay. In theory, we will discuss about few typical things uh, which are important. In uh, interviews or in uh, multiple choice questions, they may ask you such things. So some typical things we are going to discuss. So I request uh, the classroom participation for this particular part. OK, so. Uh, 4 into 3, answer is 12. Next line, if I type like this, what will be the answer? What will be the output?
is typical one. So this underscore, it will store the last answer. Interactive Python, uh, it will store the last answer. So if you, 12 plus 5, that is 70, answer will be 70. Then reserved words. So uh, we have some words which are reserved. We cannot use them as variable name or any object. So over here, these are a list of the words. So you have to remember these words. While programming, please don't use these words as object names. Like and is equal to two. If I am trying to assign a value two to and, which I am treating as variable name, it shows the syntax error. Okay. Next is. Uh, Number systems. So a number with prefix 0b is considered as exact symbol. Prefix 0b is known as exact decimal. And 0o is octal. 0o is octal. Zero x, sorry, zero x will be hexadecimal 0 b, b will be binary so for 60 uh, we can write 0 b and this entire thing binary this is octal and this is hexadecimal 3 c is hexadecimal so here it's a type of here it, it should be binary and uh, this 10 e2 and 10 e2 if e small e capital doesn't matter both of them will create the floating point numbers kindly note this if E is small or capital, doesn't matter. Both of them will create the floating point numbers. Then, uh, and operators. So, uh, this 4 and 4. So, how it operates? It converts this 4 into binary representation. So, what is binary representation of 4? 0, 1, 0, 0. And 0, 1, 0, 0. So, answer will be 0, 1, 0, 0. Same logic, tell me the answers for this 1 and 4. What will be the answer? U and 2, what will be the answer? Convert this 1 and 4 into binary. Find the answer, convert it into decimal. Reply with your answer in the chat box. Question is, what is the answer for 1 and 4? Second question is, what is the answer for 5 and 2? One and four. Answer is zero. Okay. Okay. Five and two. Okay, we will check. Yes, correct answers. One and four answer is zero. Five and two answer is zero. I hope all of you understood the logic behind this. Then find the answers for this. Uh, five and two, no need to find this. Eleven and three, five or two, eleven or four, five x or two. 11 x or 3. Be quick. Play with the answers in the chat box. Fifty three students are attending this lecture. I expect answers from everyone. Be quick. If you have doubt, you can ask it. Try to solve it over some page and then you can answer.
Okay. Okay. Very good. So now let us match the answers. Eleven and three answer is three. Five or two answer is seven. Eleven or three answer is eleven. Five x or two answer is seven. Eleven x or three answer is eight. I hope all of you got the same answer. Next is uh, left bit shift and right bit shift. If two is there, two is a number, and uh, uh, we want to shift it to right by one bit. Shift it to right by one bit. So how to do that? Paint brush for this. If two is a number, so for two, what is binary? Zero, zero, one, zero. If I want to shift it towards right by one bit, how it will be? So here, what happened? This uh, zero it got ignored, then one will come over here, zero, zero, and zero will be appended over here. Additionally, but this zero gets vanished. Okay. So this is uh, shift right by one bit. And what is the uh, equivalent, decimal equivalent of 0, 0, 0, 1? That is 1. So that's why uh, answer is 1. Then uh, the same two, same two, it is uh, here. Right there. So for this, the binary is 0, 0, 1, 0. Here it is shifted like 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So uh, it is shifted like this. So this is ignored. Come over here, come over here, and zero will be appended. And then what is the decimal? Zero zero one zero. So answer is four. So you can check answer is four. So this is shift left by one bit, shift right by one bit. Any doubt? Any query in this? We will proceed. So for this, can you find out what is the answer? Five shift left by two bit. So for five, you have to write like this: five. That is zero one zero one left by two bit. First shift left by one bit, and again by one bit, and then we will match the answers after converting it into decimal. Please try. So answer is 20. OK, let us check. Yes, correct. Very good. So for this 50, shift right towards, uh, shift towards right by three bits, it is six. You can verify this later. The next is, it is important to notice that what happens when you mix standard numeric types, adding an integer and floating point numbers, for example. If needed, Python first coerces, that is converts either of numbers according to these rules, stopping as soon as the rule is satisfied. If one of the number is complex, convert the other to complex. Okay. If one of number is complex, convert the other to complex. If one of number is floating point, convert the other floating uh, other to floating point number. Like 
3.0 and 8. This is floating, this is integer, answer is floating. Internally, it is converted into floating point. Then the uh, operation is performed. Then here, this is complex number and uh, this is uh, integer, this is complex number. So internally, this one is converted to 1 plus 0j minus 1 plus 2j. So answer is minus 2j. So these are the rules of conversion, internal conversion. The next is this do more command. So if you want quotient and remainder at the same time in the form of tuple, we can have the quotient and remainder in the form of tuple. So 5 divided by 2, uh, division is 2, remainder is 1. 6 divided by 3, division is 2, remainder is 0. So this do more command. Next is uh, power command, POW of 2 comma 3. So 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to minus 3 can be achieved using POW command. The next is multiple assignment. This is possible in Python. So here A comma B comma C is equal to 5.5 comma 2 comma 10. So what will happen? This 5.5 will be assigned to A, 2 will be assigned to B, and 10 will be assigned to C. So at the same time, we can have multiple variables and we can assign values to them. Next is you can also use multiple assignment to swap any number of variables. Like if you want to save C to A, A to B, B to C, it is possible. Earlier A was 5.5. We swapped uh, A with B. Okay, we swapped A with B. Now B becomes 5.5. And like likewise, it works for other variables. Okay. Then augmented assignment. Uh, in C++, this is typically popular uh, type of assignment. So A is equal to 10. A plus is equal to 5 means what? A is equal to A plus 5. A plus is equal to 5 means A is equal to A plus 5. So A becomes 5. Likewise, uh, like this plus equal to like that there are multiple augmented assignment operators. And uh, Python doesn't restrict you to just two operators. In comparison, uh, for example, uh, you can use uh, common a less than b less than c notation common in mathematics. If a is less than b and b is less than c, so you can combine it in Python okay, and you can compare. So here a is less than b, b is less than c is true. So that's why answer is true. Here uh, a is less than b is true. b is greater than c this is also true. So that's why answer is true. So you can write like this. You can have the multiple comparison in the same line. Right? So this is the power of pi. This is uh, operator precedence. So you must uh, remember uh, this, uh, which are the operators and which has the highest precedence. Like that. So this is just a table. You should have this for, for the reference. It's plus minus multiplication. Like this. Uh, String literals. Over here, uh, string literal is sequence of characters enclosed by matching pair of single and double quotes. So here, this is match. It, it begins with double quote, ends with double quote. Okay, fine. Begins with single quote, ends with single quote. This is also fine. But begins with double quote, ends with single quote. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. Next is uh, say in a line, if you write three strings okay they are separated by white space like there is one space bar over here you write like this and hit enter over here then what happens the python combines these three strings into one single string one two so this happens here right? next is uh, while writing a code if you give backslash like this abc backslash pqrz then it will treat it as single string, which is included within double quotes like this. Okay, so what will happen? It will uh, combine all these things into a single string. Then, if your string text covers several lines, there, there are several lines, and if you want to retain the formatting, preserve the exact formatting you use while typing it in, then use triple quoted strings. So this is triple quoted string. So this is beginning, this is beginning of string. Uh, and then this, these are the, like uh, this triple quotes means uh, preserve the format. This triple quote starts from here 
triple quote ends over here. And in between, this is string one. So this double quote is for the string one. It will end over here. Then you uh, press enter and then string two, three, four, five, six, seven. After that, triple quote. You can see here that the format is latent because of this triple quote. This is the use of triple quote. So for string, single quote is allowed, double quote is allowed, triple quote is also allowed. Next is uh, this backslash t backslash t backslash n is. So for this, how how many characters are there? What is the length of this x? So this this and is means four plus two six characters are there. Then why the length is nine? Because we know that this backslash t means tab and backslash n means new line. But it treats this as single character. So backslash t is one character. Four. This is five. Six, seven, eight, nine. So that's my answer is nine. Then uh, can anyone tell the answer for this? Uh, S is equal to Monty. Uh, S of one colon minus one. Reply in the chat box. S of one colon minus one. Very good, very good. O N T, O N T is correct answer. O N T is correct answer. One colon minus O N T. So we can use forward as well as reverse indexing in combination. It is allowed. It is allowed. It is reverse index. It's allowed. Next is you can also access each character via tuple unpacking. This feature is not used often because you have to use exactly the same number of variables as characters in a string. So here uh, we have one string. And uh, in this string there are three uh, characters. So we can use A comma B comma C to capture them. So Y will go to A, E will go to B, S will go to C like that. So this program is written in uh, Python 2. So that's why it's is not there. In Python 3 we use the bracket. Okay. Next is formatting strings. So modulo percentage operator has special behavior. So it is its percentage D means uh, this integer will come. Seven. Past percentage D means next integer. Yeah. And then percentage S means string will come from here. So it's seven past nine trade. So this will be the output for this. Okay. So this percentage, these are the uh, percentage C, percentage D, percentage F. They come from C language. So this is the uh, table for them. F, D, S, C, U, X, O, E, G, R percent like that. Yeah. Next is uh, you can cause the list of sequence to convert any sequence type to a list. Like over here, uh, there is one tuple. In tuple 5, comma 10, these are the element. So if you apply list of function on this tuple, you will get 5 and 10 as elements of a list. So you want to convert a tuple to a list, it is possible. Okay. And then list of the world. Uh, so this is a string. So we can have each character, each character is a separate uh, element of a list. If you call a list on an object that is already a list, you will get a copy of original list back. Next is list comprehensions. Uh, one final way to create list is through list comprehensions like uh, for x in range uh, 1 comma 11. So range function, it will start at m, it will go up to n minus 1. If this is n, it will go up to n minus 1. So 1 to 10 is the valid range. So it will pick up each uh, element from this like 1. First 1 is picked up, then 1 square is performed. 1 square is 1. Then next is 2, so 2 square, 4, 3. 9, 4, 16, like that. 1 to 10 are the valid elements. So 1 to 100 is the output. So we can generate list in this way. And if you want to retain only uh, even numbers, uh, even squares, then also it is possible. 
if the number is even, then only find the square. That is also possible. Then uh, for OP in sine cos tan colon, print OP. Suppose this is the function. Uh, this is the for loop where the print function is written. Then this for loop, what it will get each element. So for first iteration, it will get sine. OP value will be sine. It will print it. Next iteration, it will get cos. Next tan. Okay, one by one, it will print the elements of this list. Then uh, this map function and lambda function, we are going to discuss them in the uh, lab session because here it is not possible to clarify these things in detail. There we will uh, perform uh, hands on exercise and we can clarify those concepts. So, with this, uh, these were the typical things in Python. So, today we discussed about various types of agents and uh, we discussed about uh, typical things in Python. So, which are important for coding. So with this, uh, we'll stop here. Any doubt, any query? No, sir. Okay, you will download that in this list and then you can log out. Thank you for attending the lecture. Bye-bye.